Hello and welcome to Play the Game 4. I'm William Broom and on today's show we've got two very talented and special guests. We've got clay target shooter and land speed racer Gemma Dunn. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And we've also got former rugby union international player Ben Evans. Good to be here. Who's now based in Sydney as a coach. Ben Evans, on to you. Former rugby international union player for Wales. Now based in Sydney. Tell us about your sport. <clears throat> My sport? It's always been rugby union, I think. Being from Wales, it's something that's in your blood. It's in your DNA. It's what you grew mm. up with. When you went to school, you didn't have choices. You played rugby. <laughs> that was it. And I think when I was growing up, I was always aspiring to play for the, the Welsh rugby team like any young boy does. And I was lucky enough to do that. I, the game turned professional, I think it was in my second year of university. Mm. I decided to finish university and then I turned professional a year after. And it was the best thing I could have done. I wanted to finish my sports science degree, mm. got into it. And then rugby has been really, really good to me, I think. I had 17 years playing professional rugby. Mm. And I'm very lucky in the sense of what the game gave me. I think it probably took me a long time to realise it. And it it wasn't until towards the end of my career that I really realised how much I'd been blessed with, how much it'd given me. You know, and not just some wonderful mm. skills, you know, as a human being, yeah. but friends, what it taught me. Um, I think the, the thing about playing in a, in a team and an elite mm. team sport is it, it develops you and makes you a better human being fundamentally. But I think the friends is, is a big thing. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the whole community of rugby, which is worldwide. And I was lucky enough that when I, I moved to Sydney, mm. I had a, automatically had a network to plug into. You know, friends, people I played against, mm. had fights with, had beers with. You You're know. a coach now here in Sydney, in yeah. women's rugby. Is that about giving something back, do you think? That's it. I think you've just nailed it. I think what rugby gave me, I suppose what I'm trying now to do is give just as much back to the game. And I think in Australia, it probably needs a helping hand. Mm. I think, you know, I've spoken with friends about it and other coaches. There are so many people passionate about the game, mums and dads and, and youngsters who want to play the game, but we're fighting a battle at the moment mm. against other sports that are really attractive. That are not just about the money, but, you know, your, your AFL, mm. rugby league and soccer. You know, I think those three alone, even if you forget cricket, mm. because it's more of your summer sport, but they've eclipsed rugby union. And it, it's sad, but I think it's a case of all hands on deck. Yes. Let's do all that we can. And I think if everybody does a little bit, and I feel like I'm doing my bit, whether it be you know, last year I was helping out with the, the Waratahs under-20s mm -hmm. and under-19s, and that was great. And then this year I've moved on doing more stuff with women's rugby, which is fantastic. And I think... The parts of rugby union where you've seen a bit of diversity, mm. where you're going into sevens rugby for men and women, uh, women's rugby, wheelchair rugby, yes. they're all doing really well. But the hard thing, and it's, like I said, it's where we need a bit of help, is the 15-a-side game is, is struggling a little bit. Mm. And um, we're going to touch upon your involvement in wheelchair rugby later. But I think right now, Ben, let's take a look at you in action. chance now as Dwayne Peel prepares to feed the scrummage just five meters from the all black line the forwards go for the big surge themselves they might have the all black pack in trouble Wales drive on it's squirted Wales loose tried. penalty try to Wales Tapper Henning does penalize New Zealand at last penalty try to Wales this will bring them within striking range Riley. That's given me a hell of a lot of pleasure because when I was playing out at half, our forwards were destroyed and it's such a nice... You're watching Play the Game 4. I'm William Broom and what a wonderful clip. Ben Evans, former rugby union international player for Wales. The adrenaline and the passion. What I want to know is what makes you so passionate about rugby union? It's, it's like I said before, I think it's, it's in my DNA. It's in my blood. 
and that first clip there, where we're celebrating with Graham Henry, who went mm. on to become the New Zealand coach, that day there, you'd think we'd almost won the World Cup. Mm. But as a Welshman, all we'd actually done is beaten England. Yeah. Now, it was great. I'd, I'd never, you know, not have that day again or have it to look back on. But what we actually did that day was to stop England winning the Grand Slam. And on that day, because we beat them, it mm. gifted the last ever Five Nations trophy to Scotland, who the day before had beaten France. So that was huge. So Scotland have the last ever Five Nations. They keep it up in Murrayfield. Mm. England don't have it just because we beat them. It, for us, we had nothing to lose, you know, mm. nothing to lose or win on that game, really. But beating England was everything. And that little clip afterwards was playing against New Zealand, 2003. Mm. We genuinely believed that day we had a pushover try against them, penalty try. Up to about that 59 minutes, I think we thought we could beat them. And the last 20 minutes tell a different story where they scored three or four tries and put us to the sword. But that was awesome. On the pitch, it's a battlefield. Off yeah. the pitch, what is it like between the rival teams? Do you know what? I think uh, as rugby players, what we're all about is that we fact that we, we can still you know, have a beer. Sometimes after the game, it doesn't have to be in excess, but you can have a beer, rub shoulders with the guy you've been knocking lumps out of. And, you know, it has, like you said, it's been a battle. But then you drop that, the game's finished. And what you always see with rugby is a, is a level of humility after the game. Win, lose, or draw, be humble. And you see it creep into the modern game a little bit where there's probably a bit too much showboating, a bit too much in your face. Win. Maybe rugby's becoming a little bit like soccer, mm. but I hope it doesn't become too much like soccer. That's something that I'm really passionate about. And when we, when we coach kids, you know, you, you, they stay humble. Good. It's about working hard, be passionate about your sport and the team that you're representing, but stay humble. Because that's what you sometimes see in soccer. You know, the money goes to people's heads and it becomes almost like the lifestyle for celebrity status. What you're saying is it's got to be about the grassroots sport. Massively. What, yeah. It doesn't seem right that you could have 17-year-old millionaires mm. in soccer. It doesn't seem right to me. But the grassroots development, you know, soccer's got that nailed down. It's quite an easy sport to go to. You just mm. throw the ball up, realise where you score and sort out the offside rule. Rugby union's got a lot more complexities to it, a lot more rules, but it, it, it's, a, it's a tougher one. It's... It, it's Rugby union's got challenges ahead of it in order to compete against those other three very dominant sports. Mm -hmm. In Australia, and I, the public school game, the private school yes. game, is, is doing well. That's probably what's going to help the Wallabies and the Waratahs with their flow of players. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's all the others. It's, it's, it's hugely competitive because in the UK, we haven't got many sports, really. You know, rugby union's gone... Well, it is a very elitist sport. It, it, it thrived around private schools, didn't mm. it? Very I know it's struggling, so. mm. but these private schools now are playing mm -hmm. AFL, rugby league, and soccer. And for your young white Eastern Suburbs kid, you know, young Johnny's there, and mummy and daddy mm. don't want Johnny getting battered anymore, playing against mm. you know Islander and Polynesian kids because they see it to be a disadvantage. Ben, what's your career highlight? <sighs> There's a few along the way, and I think beating England <laughs> was just one as a child that <laughs> our whole success, our whole season could be based on as long as we beat the English. Everyone wants to beat the English. They do, they do, they do, <laughs> and I think <laughs> it goes back to those Saxon days when they dominated the Celts and pushed us into the mountains. Payback. Payback. <laughs> but it is, you know, we are the smaller nation, you know, as far as Ireland, Wales and Scotland are concerned, mm. and you know, England is the big, bad, ugly sister, really. Mm -hmm. And you do, you do. It's true. There's that air of confidence about you, English. Mm -hmm. And, um, no, I think it's just it's something you just want to do. And we... Mm -hmm. Beating England that day in 99 was huge. And then, I think, getting to the quarterfinals, 1999 World Cup mm -hmm. in Cardiff, got to the quarterfinals, which was a minimum, really, mm -hmm. for, a, you know, for a, a host team. You want to get to the quarterfinals. And we lost to the winners. We mm -hmm. lost to Australia. Put up a good show, it was a good battle, but Australia were, you know, the better team. So mm -hmm. getting to the quarterfinals was a big thing. And I think I was also part of a genre whereby Graham Henry came in mm -hmm. 
I think he really, it was a big shift in Welsh rugby where we became so much more professional on the field and off the field, and he started something. Mm -hmm. Whatever yeah. anyone says, he started it, and after my time was done, they carried on with the, that improvement and they started winning Grand mm. Slams, getting further in the World Cup. It, it was huge. So I definitely say I think it was the 99 World Cup beating England, probably. Ben, before I ask you about your interests, both of you, in fact, outside your sports, can you tell us a bit about wheelchair rugby and your involvement? Yeah, do you know what? The first time I'd seen it was on TV, and I think it might have been the World Championships, and I saw it in the Olympics as well. And it was amazing. And I got to see some guys who I've since met. Mm -hmm. I felt like a teenager in their presence. I was like, shall I get them to sign my autograph book? You know, they're like Riley Bat, mm. Chris Bond. These guys are legends, you know? And watching the way that they play rugby just epitomizes everything about the team sport and rugby. What it's all about is a huge amount of commitment mm. to the way they throw themselves into those collisions. It's, it's huge. It's, mm. it's the way I was coached to play. And I love it. And then there's been a few occasions, and I know you and I have spoken about this, where I got to play it a couple of times. They were exhibition games. The strength. Yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's a big upper body thing, you know. Mm. And there's some guys that, you know, power in those wheelchairs, and they might be short of a limb, mm. you know, a hand and stuff. And they, but they, they, their level of commitment and how they perform. You know, it's like, it's catch the ball, pass the ball, power the wheelchair, all with this upper body thing. It's phenomenal. Ben, what I want to know now is, what are your interests outside rugby? Particularly, I want to touch upon your involvement in mental health awareness. Yeah, I think it started off, I struggled towards the end of my rugby career. And I, you know, went to a bit of a dark place and with the support of friends, family, and the rugby club that I was playing at at the time, which was Mosley Rugby Club in, in the UK, I pulled through it, and it, it was a tough thing. And I think some people throughout life, they can be a trigger. You know, it can be a sport coming to an end, an injury, crisis. Mm -hmm. But I just think it's something that we all need to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I think it is good to talk about it. Some of us, it's, it's written all over us that we, we're struggling, that we've got a battle. And then the others, the ones that we don't know about, the ones that hide it really, really well, and they probably suffer in silence. And I remember when I struggled, there were a few friends of mine who'd been hiding it really well, and they kind of came out of the woodwork, and we got talking about it, and it just, just that air of relief when you know you're not the only one. And I think it puts a little bit more of a spin on it that maybe sometimes it's not quite as bad as you think it is. And, and there's, a lot, there's lots of really good movements mm. out there now, you know, fighting this battle against, you know, Trying to promote the mental health awareness. That's probably the best way to look at it. Because particularly among men, there is still a stigma, isn't there, about admitting that you may have mental health issues. Oh, it's the mm. old British thing, isn't it? The stiff mm. upper lip. Yeah. You know, you don't show your yeah. emotions, I, mm. and you just deal with it and get on with it. And that's probably what makes it worse. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are certain young rugby players, more mature rugby players, ex-teammates who I've reached out to. Mm. And I'd like to think, you know, through my experience and how I got through it, that maybe I've helped them in some way to, to cope with their issues. Because you do mentor young adults, don't you? Yeah, you know, mm. I, think, I think every time you coach someone, you're stepping into some kind of mentoring mm. capacity because you're not just teaching them about the sport. I think mm. you're teaching them good habits as a human being because if they're not successful and they don't make it to the top as an elite you mm. know, performer, Surely we can still give them some good fundamentals to take them on into the next stage of their life, whether it just be work or just about being a really good human being. Because you really are giving so much back to the community. You coach rugby players, you mentor young people, you help with mental health awareness, but you also feed the homeless. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think if... I've suggested it to a few people that... You know, a couple of people who might have some, some mental health issues... It's probably just to get a reality check sometimes, mm. you know, to realise that we, we, we do have a lot of good things in our life, most mm. of us. Mm. But then when you go and do something like that, you go into the streets of Sydney and you see almost an underworld that some people are so blinkered to. And it just, take those blinkers off. Mm. Go and realise. And, you know, my, my wife, wonderful human being, but then she, she felt 
almost kind of liberated. Just mm -hmm. those blinkers came off her, and she was like, "Wow, I didn't realize that." The depth of despair that some of these people on the streets are, are struggling with, and it, it was—it's it, enlightening. It's something I do regularly. I'm doing it again next week. Mm. I try to do it at least once or twice a month, and it gives me my reality check. Mm. Fantastic, Ben, and thanks. That is very inspiring and very humbling as well to hear all of that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And Ben, you're very much involved with women in rugby, aren't you? Yeah. What are your hopes for the future? Do you know what? I think that growth in women's rugby has been huge. And I think when you come from nothing, you will just automatically see growth. Even if it's just one person the next day and then the day after there's two people, you're automatically going to see growth, which is great. Mm. And I hope you get that in your sports yeah. as well. Absolutely. Mm. Um, I think women's rugby has got a lot to learn from men's rugby. And the bit that I love about coaching the Waratahs women's team right now is there's a lot of diversity mm -hmm. in the team, which is fantastic. And where there's a, a huge success of what 15s rugby is about, it covers all, all women mm -hmm. and men of all shapes and sizes. There's, there's a position on the field for everyone, for someone of your build, yes. my build, your, yeah. everything. It covers everyone. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get lost in 15 aside rugby union. We'll find something for you. And it's like rugby union is, it's, it's all inclusive. Thanks so much, Ben. Our guests today have been Ben Evans and Gemma Dunn. I've been William Broom, and you've been watching Play the Game 4. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>